All right, welcome to week seven, uh, where we focus our attention on the book of Psalms, which is probably my favorite part of the Old Testament. Now, in last week's readings, Arnold um, presented you with a basic introduction to Hebrew poetry, the, the nature of Hebrew poetry, specifically parallelism, and the history, structure, and forms of Israel's Psalter. In my presentations on Psalms, I don't want to replicate any part of Arnold's textbook. That information is going to serve you just fine. Instead, I want to spend time talking about what we might call the higher questions about Psalms. Uh, how do we appropriate the Psalms as contemporary Bible readers? Uh, of what value, devotional and theological, are these Psalms for us today, and how do we access that value? So that's why I chose, as your only reading for this week, Walter Brueggemann's book, Spirituality of the Psalms. All the form analysis in the world won't really open up the importance of the Psalms if we don't understand how that form gives expression to a living relationship between the singer of the Psalm and the God of Israel. The Psalms are meant to be sung. Their words are meant to be spoken by the believer, not simply studied from a safe emotional distance. More than most other parts of the Bible, for us to get everything we can out of the Psalms, we need to be willing to see in their words a reflection of our own lived experiences. And this is why Brueggemann's schema of orientation, disorientation, reorientation is so important and helpful. So this week my recommendation to you is to read Brueggemann first and then come to my presentations. And what follows, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with what Brueggemann says in Spirituality of the Psalms. So first I want to second what Brueggemann says about the value of the Psalms of disorientation with some of my own observations, especially focused in Psalm 3. That's the first part of what I'm going to do. And then next, in a series of pages concerned with Psalm 2, uh, we're going to explore how the inherent messianism uh, in some of the Psalms is revealed in their implicit movement from orientation to disorientation. That's one. Two, how the concentric structure of Psalm 2 subtly reinforces its orienting message. And then three, how the Psalms of orientation, such as Psalm 2, are especially valuable to the singer through their interaction with the Psalms of disorientation. Uh, a lot of new concepts this week, but typically this is a really, really popular week. So I hope you have a lot of fun. Do enjoy Brueggemann's book. It's really one of the best readings we have uh, this uh, in this course. Have a great week.